Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. Hello everybody, this is Jay Snook, back for some more sci-fi news just for you. So, um, there was a little show that had three seasons on Netflix. It just ended its third season called Troll Hunters. I believe it was Troll Hunters, Tales of Arcadia, a Gamma del Toro was behind it. Um, Anton Yelkin, while he was alive, uh, was in season one and two and actually finished most of his audio for season three. Anton Yelkin, you will be missed. Uh, and it was a show that I um, took a while to get into. You know, I was able to watch season two and season three. I still haven't watched season one, so I'm kind of a little in the dark about that one. Um, it, the first season was 26 episodes. Season two and three were 13 about 20 minutes episode each. Really amazing show, by the way. Computer animation. It had, like, Mark Hamill in it. Anton Yelkin. It had um, uh, Kelsey Grammer's in it. It has an amazing cast of people doing all these different characters, all these different voices. And, you know, I need to watch season one. It was a show I really, really enjoyed. It was a show that I was really surprised by. It was a really cool story. Uh, Guillermo del Toro, I think, did an amazing job with this show. Um... I've watched some of his films again. I like some of them, like Hellboy 1 and 2 I thought was great. Uh, I'm one of those people where Shape of Water, it didn't blow me away. Sorry. I mean, I thought it was all right. It was a good film, but it was not like, you know, Oscar-worthy film. That's just my opinion. But, um, yeah, but I got a chance to watch this show. Um, I really, really like this show. I personally kind of wish this show had gone on longer. It seemed like it kind of, you know, ended too soon. It's just kind of the way it went, right? Um... So much happened. It's basically, uh, usually in the past, it was always a troll. Troll village is underground. Uh, there's troll village and, you know, human world. And human world is above troll world. That's usually what happens, right? And uh, there was, you know, in season one, there was a character voiced by Clancy Brown, I believe, uh, who um, actually his son might have been voiced by someone else in the first season. And I think he might have come back and voiced the bad guy in season two and three. So anyways... So what happens is in this show, you know, um, there's this evil, you know, uh, troll who wants to, you know, take over Troll Village and then take over the world. And uh, the main character is the first human troll hunter, like, ever. And in season one, uh, he goes around and stops, you know, the son of this one evil person and saves the world. In season two, he goes to another place to try to stop the uh, main bad guy in season two, I think. And he has a different armor for part of it. And along the way, sadly, he helps this person come back and uh, kind of like, you know, makes things worse in the long run, not better. Um, and he's got a few human friends that help him out. He's got a few troll friends that help him out. Uh, in season one, one of his troll friends got turned to stone. Season two, that said friend gets turned back to normal. And then in season three, um, you know, the world and troll village is in danger. They actually bring Merlin back so we can see Merlin, who was the original creator of the uh, armor that Jim, you know, Anton Yelkin wears in season three. You get to see the final battle, and uh, along the way, you know, Jim changes. Uh, you know, the risks change, the uh, challenges change. So a lot happens in these three seasons. And in the end, uh, you know, Troll Village is gone. They need to find a new place to live. And there's two friends who go, hey, you know, we'll stay here and try to protect, you know, this town here, right? This is what's going to happen, right? Right. And, uh, like I said, Jim was a troll hunter. His two friends were kind of helpers with him. They all had special weapons. He had the special armor. And, um, in the end of the show, you know, we do get to see, you know, hey, evil vanquished. And, you know, yeah, they have to go and find a new troll village. And 
So again, this is more a New York Comic Con, you know, news that happened is they announced there's going to be a new show coming. Well, we got to see the first glimpse, the first look into this new show. Let's put it that way. We got to see the first look into this new uh, show, which is going to be called Three Below. It is a Tales of Arcadia show. It's a spinoff, though. It looks at three aliens, two brothers, and I guess they're like a keeper or protector come to Earth and we're going to see the different things they get to go through. You know, the different good guys, the bad guys, the battles, the missions, all that stuff. And um, the, te- the the teaser itself doesn't show you very much. It shows, you know, okay, them as aliens, uh, their human disguises. Uh, there's some cool little, you know, animation there. Guillermo del Toro is doing this one again. Uh, we're going to have where... Uh, it's, it was announced that Glenn Close is going to be in it in some kind of character, so that's really cool. Um, it's going to have a good cast of characters again. And, uh, yeah, like I said, not much, though, is known about this show yet because that's kind of what teasers like to do. They like to give you a taste, but they don't like to show you, hey, this is what's happening, and, you know, you, you get a full feel for it. So um, so my thoughts on this show, from what I've watched from the teaser, because teaser, I've watched the teaser a few times now, um, I'm intrigued. I'm curious. It looks like it might be good because, like I said, I was surprised with uh, Troll Hunters. I wasn't sure if I was going to like that show, but I left going, you know what? This is a good show. I really liked it. I had a lot of fun watching it. I kind of honestly wish it had gone on a bit longer, but what after happened with Anton Yelkin, uh, I understand why it only lasted as long as it did. And by the way, for those who are curious, uh, I think they did a good transition from Anton Yelkin to the person who finished the season off. That was really kind of cool how they did that. And. So um, I'm, I'm intrigued, I, but I'm in the place where I really do. I want to know more about this show. What is it really going to be about? What kind of evil are they going to face? Um, what kind of challenges are they going to face? Why are they on Earth? Did they crash land there? Or did they just kind of show up there one day? Um, and just like, you know, what's going to be the premise of the show? I read a short little premise, but even that doesn't really tell you too much about it. But um, like I said, Guillermo del Toro did a really really good job with the um first show troll hunters so i think it's going to be a good show and it is going to be a continuation of the tales of arcadia so i think it's going to take place in the same place that the um last show did troll hunters and i want to even say these characters might have shown up in troll hunters a little bit i think there was a little we got to at least meet them i think we got to meet two people who were um I think they we found out toward the end that they were aliens. So I think we have already met them, I think. But this is going to be where it's going to focus more on them, who they are, where they came from, what their mission is, and things like that. So I would say if you really liked Troll Hunters, if you were a big fan of the show, um, and if you're like like some fans, we are itching for you know more Tales of Arcadia, then this is a show you might want to watch. I believe actually this series is based on a series of books. I could be wrong, but I think it is. Don't quote me on that one, but I think that's right. And um, yeah, we like at New York Comic Con, they had, uh, you know, Guillermo del Toro was there. They had Glenn Close there. I don't know if they said what role she was playing. I don't remember that. I want to say they might have hinted at it a little bit, but we didn't get, you know, like, oh, yeah, she's playing this, and her role's going to be this, and she's going to do this and that. No, I don't think we got such things. I don't think so. But, um, yeah, it looks like it's not going to be bad. It's going to be the same animation, the same really cool, really colorful. There's going to be a lot of action, it looks like. And um, it does a good job getting you interested in the show and kind of showing you, like, a little, giving you a taste of what the show is going to be about, I believe. Now, I was sadly not able to make it to New York Comic Con, but I do believe that they actually might have even shown the first episode they might have done that so they might have premiered the first episode at new york comic con i think now if you are curious when does this show come on i believe it comes out either december 14th or december 21st i think is when this show is going to come to netflix um i want to say it's going to have 13 episodes maybe it'll have 26 but 13 probably sounds more realistic because that's what they've done the last couple of seasons and frankly for shows like this i kind of prefer 13 it's easier to watch them. It's easier to get through them. They're getting about 20-something minutes each usually. So I think it's easier to watch them than if you're trying to, you know, do 26. Because 26 is just, it's a lot. You know, like I said, that's why I haven't watched season one. That's a 
big chunk of a season. It's kind of hard to watch that all in one sitting. Now, if they did it like two episodes a week or every week, that might be easier. But since they don't, I have had a few challenges just trying to get through it and watch it. That's just the truth. That's just how it has been. So, uh, yeah, definitely check that uh, teaser out on YouTube. And hopefully we'll get uh, more about that show in the coming months. So other than that, we're going to take ourselves a short little break right now. And we'll be back with you in a moment. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Hello, everybody. This is Jay Snoke back with some more sci-fi news for you. So um, there was a show that went on Netflix. Uh, oh, God. I want to say it was last year, maybe. Has it been that long? It seems like it hasn't been that long, but I guess it might have been that long. Um, it was based on a video game, which, by the way, I haven't really played ever before, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, you know, called uh, Castlevania. And... I don't know if originally if uh, Nintendo, uh, actually Nintendo's not right, uh, the company that made it and Netflix themselves, that they had much hope or faith in it in the beginning. I don't think they did because they it was an animated show. It was very, very violent, by the way, but that's, you know, Castlevania. Castlevania is kind of supposed to be violent. I'd be surprised if Castlevania wasn't violent. That's, you know, Castlevania for you. So, um... Yeah, so anyways, so uh, this was a show that, you know, went on Netflix. They only did four episodes. I don't know if they had much hope about it, but it did really, really well. Fans went nuts for it. They really, really liked it. I was very um, surprised and impressed by it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was an amazing show, an amazing four episodes. And being that it was four episodes, it only gave you, like, literally, it's like a little... A little bit of backstory about the show, the cartoon. You, inter- you made like the main characters, and they kind of came together, and that was it. Now, shortly after this show came out, it got announced for a season two, which is going to be double the episodes. It's going to be four instead of eight. So, hooray for that! And uh, into the Castlevania games, you know, I had tried when I was younger to play some of the originals, but this was the era where video games were very very hard and Castlevania was no exception it was a really hard game it was a really challenging game I think I tried to play one or two of them when I was growing up but yeah I usually just would get my butt kicked and go you know what this isn't fun this is torture so Castlevania was never really a game I played there's been a lot of games at this point I've heard there's been a lot of good games there are a lot of people who really like the games you know I've heard the two like it's side scrollers usually 2d I've heard they're really, really good games. I probably should give them a shot if I ever get a chance to. But, um, yeah, so um, it's basically where, like, you know, Belmont, I want to say usually Simon Belmont, maybe sometimes another Belmont, but usually they're going around trying to stop Dracula from, you know, resurrecting and taking over the world, or Dracula just taking over the world. You know, you fight a lot of different monsters. Usually you usually have a whip. You'll have things like holy water and things like that to help you along the way. And you're just going around. I... Don't know if it's always just in Dracula's castle. It might go a bit deeper than that sometimes. I don't really know. Like I said, I haven't ever really been that big into the games. I haven't, you know, played many of the games much, nor did I ever get that far in many of the games. But I believe that's the basic premise usually where it's like, you know, Belmont, Simon Belmont is going around, you know, uh, fighting all these different monsters, usually in Transylvania or somewhere Romania or somewhere like that to stop Dracula from like, you know, rising up and taking over the world, right? And um, so, what does this have to do with what I'm going to talk about? So, uh, we got a little while ago, and it might have been it might have been a good while ago, 
a second trailer for uh, Castlevania Season 2, which is going to be on Netflix. And where do I begin? So again, there's a lot of violence in here, but for a show like this, it, it really makes sense. Um, and so what happened in last season, how it started, was, you know, Dracula had a wife, and I don't remember if it was a human wife or a non-human wife, but anyways, these townsfolk, you know, decided... We're going to kill Dracula's wife. They did that, and, well, let's just say in a nutshell, Dracula was not too happy about this. He was actually quite mad, and he wants to, you know, pretty much take humans out after this. He's like, you know what? You're a pestilence on the earth. You don't deserve to be here. You're all going to pay for what you did. And in season one, you know, uh, the Belmont, which I don't think it's Simon, is kind of like, you know, a disgraced member of his family. He's not really too excited about it, but he's like, well, I guess I kind of have to do this. I think he has someone else come along who helps him. I want to say she's like a mage or something like that, or has some magic powers. And then at the end of the season, toward the end of the season, we find Alucard, which I think is a son of Dracula. And the three come together to go, you know what, we need to try to stop Dracula because he's, he's serious, you know. So season two, we get to see where, yeah, Dracula is, you know, still very mad at the world and his plan to eradicate humanity begins. Um, and we see in this trail, like, you know, like I said, there's a lot of violence, there's a lot of gore, there's a lot of, you know, death and blood and things like that. We see a lot of Dracula. You can tell Dracula is very, very angry, very, very mad, and very, very out for vengeance. He really is. We get to see a bit of uh, Belmont, which I wish I could remember what his name is. I don't think it's Simon. I think it's one of the other ones long after Simon. We get to see a bit of Alucard, and he has a really cool sword that I think was awesome. We get to see him slash some, you know, demons and bad guys and monsters with that. We get to see other members of their party. Uh, we get to see her use some magic and take out some bad guys that way. And we can see, you know, like just how serious Dracula is because there's a lot of, you know, uh, people who get harmed and people who get killed and a lot of, again, just like uh, really violent moments. And Dracula's plan begins. We actually get to see in this too, Dracula kind of builds up his own little team of, uh, well, I want to say vampires to, you know, all come together to take out... Um, you know, the uh, humans once and for all. So he's not working alone either. It's not just Dracula against the world. No, he's got his own little, you know, group of like either mercenaries or fighters as well. And uh, it seems like it's going to be a, a very much more bloodier, gorier, intense, and, uh, you know, we mean business season. And uh, I have to say, I am really, really excited for this show. I think this season is going to just blow the last one completely out of the water. I really think that's going to happen. Um, and yeah, like many people, I'm excited for it. I think it's going it, it, like it to... It shows you so much like where the season is going to be. And again, it's going to be you know bigger too because it's going to have double the episodes of the previous season. They were usually about 20-something minute episodes. Um, uh, you don't, I don't think you have to watch the games to understand the show. Like I said, I haven't played any of them really. And I understood the show easily. I could follow it with pretty good ease. I wasn't too confused or too lost or too un, you know, not. I was able to follow what was happening really most of the way throughout. It's just the way it was. So I was able to do that. And uh, I will say it's definitely not a show for kids. Absolutely not. No, little kids probably should not watch this. It probably will give them some nightmares. This probably. I could be wrong. Maybe kids are more thick skinned nowadays. I don't know. But I would say most likely a kid, little kid especially, probably shouldn't watch this show. Um, and if you're not into like extreme gore and violence and all that stuff, it may not be the show for you either. But if you're okay with those things, I would highly recommend this show. I really would because it's it's one of those shows that it really only Netflix could do right. I think if someone else did it, it just it wouldn't be the same show. It just wouldn't do the you know the story as well as justice. I just don't think it would. I don't see it doing that anyway, honestly. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be an amazing, amazing season, you know, and uh, we'll see what's going to happen next. I know that for sure it's going to be just from what I saw from the trailer that I've watched a few times. It's going to be intense. It's going to be definitely a battle of the ages. And Dracula is definitely out for, you know, blood and is yeah, like Simon, I mean, Belmont and one of the, the Belmont and Alucard and, uh, you know, their third uh, ally are going to have their hands full trying to stop whatever it is, 
he's planning on doing. And um, if you are curious, season one, of course, is still on Netflix. Again, it's only four episodes, so I don't think it'd be too hard to catch up here. I just I, and I, I'd suggest you probably should just so you have a basic idea of what's going on. I don't think you'd have to, but it's probably a good idea to watch it just because I think it has been a while. I might even actually just watch it again just because I think it has. It might have been a year since the uh, first season aired. It may have been. Um, yeah, so it's catching up is usually not a bad idea with these types of things. And yeah, I would say probably doing that is probably not a terrible idea. And if you are wondering. That does come to Netflix on October 26th, so it is in the next couple of weeks. It'll be here before we know it. Um, other than that, we're going to take ourselves another short little break, and we'll be back again with some more sci-fi news in just a few moments. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hello, everybody. This is Jay, back with some more sci-fi news for you. So, if you've listened to some of the episodes I've done, you can tell I am a big Star Wars fan. I'm a very, very big Star Wars fan. I've watched all the movies. I've watched most of the pre, uh, you know, recent shows. Um, I still haven't watched Cl Clone Wars. I know, I know, I need to watch that. I've heard really, really good things about Clone Wars. I've heard it's an amazing show. Um, it's on Netflix. It's usually, <coughs> excuse me, usually about 20 minute episodes. Um, it goes into, you know, a lot of a time period of Star Wars. And there are a lot of really big Star Wars shows coming out in the near future, like I've said before. So, um, yeah, I really, really enjoy Star Wars. Um, I like where most of the movies are going lately. Even though a lot of people weren't big fans of Solo, I did enjoy that movie. I thought it was a good movie. And, um, and you've heard me talk a little bit. Uh, before about uh, Star Wars Resistance, which has actually started to air on, uh, I believe it's on Disney Channel right now. It started to air, and I talked about on one of the previous episodes about uh, a teaser they released for it, and my thoughts on it, and you know where I thought the animation looked really weird, uh, the faces look really strange, and so it's also weird too where they say that oh this show is going to take place, you know. After Return of the Jedi, but before, you know, uh, The Force Awakens. So that's a 30-year gap. And for some reason with this show, they thought, well, we have a 30-year gap. Let's do it be six months before The Force Awakens, which I don't really understand why in God's name they did that. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't see why you would do that. What's the point in doing that? When you have 30 years to do it, why would you do it so close? And um, I actually decided uh, last week to finally watch the first episode of Star Wars Resistance. And so here's going to be a little thought of what I think about it. So the film takes place, like I said, six months before, um, you know, Star Wars Force Awakens happens. So it's not this huge, you know, gap between that movie and this. And uh, it's a new main character. He's someone who, you know, wants to be a pilot and it's his dream, but... He doesn't really know how to do it. Um, he ends up on a little cruiser is where he ends up. And um, he uh, and it's Poe Dameron voiced by uh, Oscar Isaac. So he's in there to voice Poe Dameron to help this guy. You know, uh, he kind of wants to be a part of the resistance, too. So there's still that. Um, and I think they originally run into each other uh, through 
And this I don't remember seeing in the movies. There was they go against a new kind of first order like Tie Fighter. I think is how the show the episode starts. And um, we get to see you know uh, the two of them take him on, and Poe Dameron like you know and him take it on, and and he has his own droid. And we see BB-8 show up, which uh, was really cool. And so when he ends up on this a uh, little like you know on this little uh, cruiser of sorts, this, like, little station, um, he, you know, things go kind of awry right away. You know, he uh, doesn't get it wrong with people right away. He makes a kind of peculiar friend right away. Um, he's supposed to try to keep a low profile there and be a, you know, spy for the resistance because it's believed that a First Order, like, a spy of sorts is around there, someone who's working for the First Order. So he has to do that. Um, he gets himself, you know into a really bad fight in one of the uh, bars. Uh, he actually even gets in a further, you know, worse position where he's like, oh, you know, yeah, I'll race. And, like, it's a race. It's this really dangerous race that people usually die in, you know, and he's doomed to do it, to, like, do bad. And if he doesn't do bad, he'll get thrown over the side into the water. And there's, you know, we hear where there's giant, mon- like, you know, animals in there that'll eat him whole in one bite. So things get really bad for him really fast. They just do. It's like, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> You're in a heap, heap of trouble, you know, and um, we get to see an idea of the place, some of the new characters, some of his new potential allies, maybe. We hear originally the guy who's going to maybe like, you know, help out uh, this new character is like, I'm not doing that. I'm I'm not a part of the resistance anymore, the rebellion, you know, leave me alone. And um, yeah, it's got a lot of action in it. There's a few cool fight scenes, but mostly it's just like uh, the race is a big part of it where... You know, he does, He sees the race at first and how intense it is and how crazy it is. And, um, you know, he uh, he actually also, he also says, oh, I'm the best pilot in the galaxy, which doesn't help his case and getting in the race and all that stuff. It's kind of what causes that to happen. So him saying that, you know, puts him in deep water too. And um, then, you know, uh, we get to see where there's a part where he goes, oh, you get to choose your own racer. And he thinks, oh, I chose this, you know, person here and I'll be able to beat them, right? Because it's expected, like, you know, if you, you want to beat them or at least survive, right? That's what you want to do. And um, that's just, you know, it turns out to be one of the better racers and someone who almost never loses. So he ends up just in a worse situation there. And as the episode progresses, you know, he gets closer to the race. Uh, the vehicle he has is literally a piece of junk. It's almost like falling apart. So it looks like his, you know, um, chances of winning this race are very, very bleak. And um, along the way, you know, he gets he's able to pull together because he's supposed to get parts to help the ship, but he doesn't have any credits to do so because I think he does a stupid bet early on and loses all his money that way. So he, he he loses all the credits he had already. And uh, then, you know, the race gets closer. He finds a way to get the parts lease he needs to at least get through the race and at least survive. So he doesn't win, but he doesn't die either. He doesn't crash. So that's good. And it's basically a race in ships where you're going through all these different... Uh, you're going through all these different uh, rings, you know. That's just what's happening. Uh, you know, his ship does catch on fire. He almost crashes, but somehow he pulls out of it and he stays, you know, he stays alive. So, and the first episode at the end of it, you know, it's like, okay, fine. You didn't die. So good for that. You know, and yeah, you can stay with me after all the guy says, you know, and, um, after that, you know, it's like, you're going to work in my shop and you're going to help me, you know, maintenance because that's what him and some of his friends are doing. Um, and that's basically where the episode ends, and he's going to still be a spy, and he's still going to try to find, you know, whatever First Order spy is there. It sounds like people don't necessarily believe the First Order exists. Not, so we do get to see, too, toward the end, a really cool scene of, uh, I believe it was called Star Killer Base. We get to see that. So that's really, really cool. And um, so that was a really cool little tidbit towards the end. So... And the episode is about 30, 40 something minutes because it's a pilot. So it's probably two episodes put together is how they probably did it on TV. And uh, that's kind of where it starts. That's where this show basically begins. There's actually like, I think, four or five episodes that have aired now. But I've only watched the pilot so far. So that's all I'm going to watch so far. And I will probably talk about future episodes as I get to watch them on here. So what are my impressions of this show um it's definitely different it's not the show i expected it would be the main character is kind of a mess but he is kind of likable at the same time especially toward the end uh 
the characters aren't too bad. Uh, I can't say they're superbly strong, but they're not too bad. Um, the villains, we don't really necessarily see any really big ones yet. Not really. Not honestly. This is kind of the way it is. Um, and yeah, and the location is not a bad location. I don't know if it's going to last for a few episodes or if it's going to last for the whole season. I don't know, to be honest. Um, I have a few problems with it too, though. So for starters, like I said... It wasn't a bad pilot. It it just wasn't superbly strong either. And it still really bugs me. Like the time period, the timeline in the Star Wars universe they chose for this doesn't make any sense to me. I can't really get over that. It's like, okay, so you technically had like, I don't know, let's say like you had um, 30 years to choose from. Okay, so 30 years. So you could have done like anywhere in that 30 year gap. And if you had done that, you would have had the chance you know, tell a lot more, and you even could have done time jumps, and it would have been okay, right? Because there was another uh, Star Wars show I got to watch called the, uh, it was uh, the Freemaker Adventures, which was a Lego Star Wars show. And don't be wrong, it wasn't a bad show, but it backed itself into a corner. It only had two seasons because it tried to tell stories between episode, you know, uh, four, five, and six, but it only lasted two seasons because it hit a point where it's like, okay, now we've got, you know, uh, the stuff that happened with uh, episode six and that's all done and everything's done and, you know, hooray, everything's over. So it backed itself into a corner. And um, whereas Star Wars Rebels and Star Wars Clone Wars didn't do that, they didn't back themselves into corners. They had plenty of story to tell. They had plenty of things to tell. They had chosen their timelines well. Even with Star Wars Rebels ending the way it did, it at least, like, you know, got a chance to tell new sides to the story that hadn't been told before, and it wasn't really rushed either. It really wasn't. So I fear that this show may fall into that same trap. And I'm sorry, what really bugged me is the faces. The faces of the characters, like, they're, like, the uh, the effects look good. The animation isn't bad, you know, the locations, things like that, the ships, that's all really good. But the faces of the characters look almost like hand-drawn, almost like a kid drew them. It's really kind of weird. I really don't understand why they look that way. Like, I, I still don't understand why they did, you know, animation when they could have done computer animation. Because they did that with, you know, uh, Clone Wars and with Star Wars Rebels and looked really good and really amazing. The characters looked just crisp and clean and wonderful. So, I'm not really sure why they didn't do that with this. I don't really understand. So, um, I'm still kind of up in the air about the show so far. I can't say I hate it. But I can't say it's turned me in. It's a wonderful, amazing show that every Star Wars fan must watch. I can't say that yet. So I'm going to have to see more to really, like, you know, make a decision of am I going to really like this show? Is this a show worth watching or not? So, um, yeah, and again, that show airs on Disney Channel. I want to say, I'm not sure what day, to be honest. But it's or it's aired, like, four or five episodes now. You can check them out. Um, and, yeah, maybe, like, you know, you feel different about it than I do. So, uh, but me, I still kind of need to see a bit more to be like, okay, is this a show worth watching or is this a show they just tried to do and just kind of didn't work out too well? Because they've had shows and movies that have gone both ways. So other than that, that's all we have for you today. Um, I hope that you, you know, enjoyed our show and heard some really cool things about upcoming uh, movies and TV shows. And other than that, have yourself a wonderful rest of the day and we'll be back uh, for another episode real soon. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program